When it comes to high quality sleep, people today have a big problem. Multiple studies have found that as much as one third of the adult population in the United States has insomnia. And when you add chronic pain into the mix, things only get worse. A recent article published in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research found that as much as 65% of people with rheumatoid arthritis have issues with their sleep. 70% of people with osteoarthritis have chronic sleep disturbance, and as much as 95% of people with fibromyalgia have difficulty sleeping. But the really interesting thing about the relationship between chronic pain and sleep is that it's bi-directional, meaning that if you can reduce your pain, it leads to better sleep, but also if you can find ways to sleep better, it'll reduce your pain. And so keeping that in mind, in this video, I'm going to be sharing my top five recommendations for optimizing your sleep routine to reduce your pain levels. Let's get into this. Strategy number one is to consume your final calories for the day, whether they come from food or drink, no less than three hours before bedtime. In this large scale study from 2020, researchers found that eating within three hours of going to bed was positively associated with disturbed sleep and waking up in the middle of the night. And the reason for this is simple. You see, anytime you take in a bunch of calories, your body has to ramp up metabolic expenditure in order to break down, digest, and absorb the nutrients that you just took in. And this actually requires a ton of energy and it sends a very clear signal to your physiology which is there's a bunch of fuel coming in, we're firing up the engines, get ready to be active, which is exactly the opposite of what you want when you're getting ready to go to sleep at night. And so with a little bit of pre-planning, you can consume your final meal several hours before bed and begin cooling your engines in preparation for an awesome night's sleep. The second strategy is to create a clear and consistent expectation for sleep. Setting expectations is crucial for the success of any relationship and your relationship with sleep is no different. One of the most powerful things that you can do to condition your body and mind to go to sleep easily and then stay asleep all night is to establish a clearly defined expectation for exactly what time you go to bed at night and what time you wake up in the morning. Sticking to a sleep schedule will literally entrain your body's internal clock and help create the physiological changes that are necessary to get a good night's sleep every night. This 2018 study published in the Journal of Clinical Gerontology found that as variability in the times that people went to bed and woke up in the morning increased and went beyond the 60 minute mark, the total amount of sleep that they got each night decreased. Strategies three and four are all about creating the optimal sleep environment. And this starts by creating complete darkness in your bedroom at night. I mean, your bedroom should be so dark that you're unable to see your hand when it's positioned directly in front of your face. And the reason for this is simple. You see, melatonin is the hormone in your body that's responsible for regulating your circadian rhythm and your sleep cycle, and it's secreted by your pineal gland in direct response to darkness. So the darker you can make your bedroom on a consistent basis, the more you will help your body naturally ease into sleep at night. And there are a few things that you can do to help make that happen. Number one, you wanna get rid of any electronics in your bedroom, especially any that have those little indicator lights on them in blue, green, or white. Now those spectrums of light can be incredibly disruptive to a brain that's trying to sleep at night. So get them out of there. Number two, you wanna get rid of any external light that's spilling into your bedroom. And that means investing in a set of high quality blackout curtains or shades, or at the very least, getting an inexpensive sleep mask. This systematic review from 2019 reported that exposing a person while they're asleep with their eyes closed to even very low levels of light, I'm talking just five or 10 lux, was enough to induce a circadian response and disrupt their sleep. Strategy number four in the second part of creating the optimal sleep environment is fine tuning the temperature in your bedroom to facilitate the body's sleep response. And brand new research shows that the ideal room temperature actually varies somewhat depending on your age. The general consensus is that children, teens, and young adults should sleep in a room that's somewhere between 60 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit, or roughly 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. It's not surprising that infants like it just a little bit warmer than that, like one to two degrees. But what is surprising is some brand new research that was published at the end of 2023 that showed that the ideal bedroom temperature for older adults is significantly warmer than that. According to this longitudinal study that was published in the journal Science of the Total Environment, sleep for older adults was most efficient and restful when it was in a bedroom that ranged between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit 
or 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And there are lots of ways that you can fine tune the temperature in your bedroom to get it just right for optimal sleep. During the warmer months of the year, you can close the blinds of your house to help reduce the buildup of heat during the day. You can open windows in the evening to create ventilation and promote cooling. You can also use fans to cool local areas inside of your house, like directly over your bed works fantastic for cooling via convection. And on those really hot nights, you can always turn down the thermostat and use air conditioning. One other thing that people often forget about is the fibers that they surround themselves with while they sleep. I'm talking bedding, pillows, and pajamas. Natural fibers do not hold heat the way that synthetics do. So something like cotton with high breathability cools down very well, promotes optimal sleep. Things like uh, polyesters tend to hold heat and progressively warm up during the night. And that warming effect is enough to disrupt your sleep. So you want to avoid those man-made fibers. And the fifth and final strategy is to reduce your exposure to electromagnetic fields as much as you possibly can while you sleep at night. In this study that was published in the journal Electromagnetic Biology and Medicine, researchers measured the effects that varying amounts of EMF exposure had on three separate groups of people. And overall, they found that increased exposure to EMFs had a direct and significant relationship to increased stress, depression, and anxiety. Furthermore, they found that the group of people that were exposed to the highest amounts of EMF consistently had the lowest quality sleep when compared to people who had less exposure. To cut down on your EMF exposure at night, you want to take your phone and all of your personal devices and get them out of your bedroom completely. Beyond that, you want to physically unplug any routers, modems, wall chargers, or red light therapy devices because as long as those things stay plugged into the wall, even if they're turned off, they're still putting out EMFs and those EMFs can disrupt your sleep. So now you have five simple evidence-based strategies to help you sleep better every single night. And best of all, most of these strategies are easy to implement and they don't cost a thing. Now, if you're in need of high quality blackout curtains or a sleep mask, or sheets that help you to stay cool and maintain that optimal temperature all night. I'm gonna put links for all of that in the description down below this video. Beyond that, I just wanna thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button before you head out of here, and I'll see you next time.